It was well after midnight. Met my quota. I need to find out what was going on with Sabi. I needed to help her if I could. I had what Sabi asked for. It was time to find out what this was all about. How long can I stall for? I just wonder. I wonder. Is these people here... I don't know. I need to charge though, in any case. Ah, uh, I can't even make it over there. I can charge here. Yo. Should I just go see her? I kind of want to see Carlos again, but they're not showing me Carlos. <laughs> Should I go see Azul? Uh, Klaus? Hold on. I got one more ride for tonight? Excluding Savy, right? They're pretty much gonna make me go to Savy. Before I go to Savy, I can go with whoever I want. This guy seems like he's interesting, but I don't know. Nourish me, all ye in pain. I gather my strength to rise once again. Not the greatest customer, but we'll check him out. Whoa. The Pax's eyes were dim as he dropped into the back seat. Whoa. He looked... Was that a tattoo on his scalp? He was headed to 5th Street, subway station. Could that be right? Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit scared because he seems pretty not standard, but let's try not to judge him right away. People don't take the subway anymore. Why? I didn't know people still took the subway. Agonin only sighed. I pulled into traffic and left him to his mood. I had my own things to stew about. I should have been with Sebi by now, drinking to my new life in Los Ojos. A nice spicy margarita, made by a robot probably. Now I couldn't imagine what was going to happen to her. Did she even trust me anymore? Aganon found my eyes in the rearview mirror. Oh, he smiled a little bit. He pulled his lips into a tight, joyless smile. Lena, right? That's me. Lena, you look about as bad as I feel. <laughs> it's been a rough week. Wait though, I wanted to learn more about the subway tunnels. Why don't people use the subway anymore? Does Capra own the subway? Huh, I wonder. Cyberpunk futuristic thing? People don't use trains anymore. Something like that. It's been a rough week. Oh, I'd say it's been more than a week. This city feels kind of heavy, right? Yes. Los Ojos can be... a painful place. Life is pain. Pain is life. It's the only constant I find. Oh. Mind if I ask what's got you down? Life in general? <laughs> Everything and nothing. The tiniest slights. The most cosmic horrors. I'd heard a lot of sad stories inside this car and told a few of them myself too. Something told me this one was going to be a little... new. I feel like when people are sad, telling them, well, it's gonna get better, well, it definitely wouldn't work on people who have clinical depression. Being in a bad mood together feels kind of good, doesn't it? It does. He was quiet, but I could almost feel him forming something to say. It was intense. You seem like... Hmm. He wrung his long fingers in his lap. May I tell you about something very important to me? 
I think so. Aganon's voice dropped deeper, like he was speaking from inside a cave. You carry me now on my nightly quest to seek the pain worm. It is called Metawopian, the dark leviathan that roils beneath Los Ojos, feasting. Wait, is that the worm that Una was talking about before? And actually, is that the subway train? We nourish it, you see. You and I, and millions like us, and soon... Uh, don't interrupt him. Very soon, Metawopian will emerge. Bellowing its cry of infinite despondence. And it will consume all of our pain. All of it, gone. <laughs> Forever. Pain being gone? Sounds... it should be a good thing. Well, that's... Also, the city will be destroyed. Oh. <laughs> what a time to be alive. Agonon made a hissing sound. <sighs> I decided to leave him to his gloomy silence. It was so dark. I almost missed the subway station. There was only a flickering sign over a dingy stairwell. He seemed like he was waiting for me to say something. <laughs> you too. Feel worse. I can't believe you'd say that. Your understanding feeds my quest tonight. I'll make an offering to the Metawopian in your honor. Glad we said the right thing. Expect to reap his spoil soon. The pain worm always rewards devotion. Wait, did that mean that something good or bad was about to happen? At least I'd made him... satisfied. <laughs> in his dark coat, he moved across the street like a shadow, and disappeared into the subway tunnel. I wondered what kind of rituals he was going to get into down there. Or maybe he'd just hop a train to the suburbs. Who knows? Well, that was kind of a mysterious one. Four stars for understanding. Together, we nourish the pain worm. Which actually decreases my score because I had more than four before. Thanks so much, Aganon. Even his name is pretty... I don't know, that guy seemed like a... A culty person. But he was nice. He didn't, like, do anything to me. So I guess it's okay. I met my quota for the night. Now it's time for me to go to Savy. Hmm. Rise! Pain worm? I'm kind of wondering how long we can stay here though because I don't feel like they're making me go to Savy just yet and Agonon's right here again! Okay? I mean... Yeah? <laughs> the, the book of the Metawopian. Am I gonna be okay on energy? Sure. Agonon looked as gloomy as ever as he dropped into the back seat. Hi again. You getting out of the subway? I'm back to pick you up. I was about to ask him about it, but I remembered my last ride with him. <sighs> A terrible night, huh? Not as bad as it could be. I'm glad to see you again, Aganon. Seriously, how's your night going? To tell you the truth, I'm mostly... tired. <sighs> What's got you so exhausted? I started the Lost Ojos chapter of the Cult of the Metawopian. Yeah, so he is a cult leader. 
Did I tell you that already? Well, it's growing fast. A dozen neophytes this, just this month. I told them each to bring a friend, but I didn't really expect them to. Now their friends are bringing friends. We need a bigger meeting place. Hmm, it's a lot of work, huh? All sorrows to Metawopian, may it rise. Is what I guess you all say. <laughs> Are you sure you're not among the initiated in the sorrow? <laughs> sorrow wishes. Well, at any rate. I can barely keep up. What's the hardest part? Where do I begin? Metawopian's message has taken a deep hold in Los Ojos. Wormed its way in? <laughs> Wordplay is a breakdown of traditional etymological barriers. It pleases Metawopian. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. But I digress. This story seems a little bit different from the other ones because I'm not really sure how it's related to cyberpunk and dystopias. Other than everyone being sad in the future. <laughs> I thought there might be too much competition here. What with the current political unrest? The Radix blobs materializing in the streets. I think you mean Radix Swarm? Yes, now that's a cult. Don't... <laughs> Elo is just the right kind of weird. I will admit that the city's denizens seem to take the idea of a subterranean worm god in stride. Really, very much in stride. Tonight, I'm distributing brochures at deadweight gyms. And I have to look at a few new meeting places. Then I have three different consultations with acolytes. They're advancing through the ranks so quickly. This one, Todd, he's almost on Volume 6 of the Book of Hunger and Hardship. I don't even have Volume 6. I'm going to have to ask Agonizer, Protatio, from Seattle to send it. Oh, maybe Agonin is like, um, a religious name? Oh. So the problem is that you're too busy? Well, no, not exactly. I didn't know if these teachings would work in Los Ojos. I took a risk. And they did work, and now... His voice shrunk to the tiniest peep. I feel good about it. <clears throat> I bit my tongue. Speak of this to no one. None of my neophytes must know. When I feel good, I deny the pain worm its sustenance. Oh, Aganon, that seems like a hard way to live. So, just to get this straight, you feel bad about feeling good, about helping other people feel bad. That's a bit of an oversimplification of my path through Metawopian's great quivering heart. But yes, more or less. Why do you think your cult has been so popular in Los Ojos? Oh, duh, because everyone is sad here. I can't take all the credit. Deadweight was already very popular. I had no idea what Deadweight was. Deadweight? The gyms where you exercise in total darkness? Ensuring that your inevitable corpse will be a beautiful offering to the unfeeling void? <laughs> You've heard of them? Uh... Maybe, I think I had it confused with that morbid yoga thing. <laughs> There's more than one of this kind of thing here. Oh, no. Mortal Flex is totally different. I was a deadweight trainer in Seattle. 
It's how I got into Metawopian. A natural progression. Of course. So, it is even worse that I feel this... pride. Mm. You want to help everyone feel bad, but you feel good about feeling bad I mean, you feel bad about feeling good about that. I don't know. I don't see it that way. I think you did the hard work here, Aganon. Not dead weight. The pain worm knows the truth. Can I make a suggestion about feelings? Of course. I know you're, uh... Priest, I guess? He said he used to be a deadweight trainer. Priest? Junior Agonizer. Go on. <laughs> Agonizer. That's why he's the Agonon. Because everything is agony. Right. And I know you're deep into this group. And it's all about pain. But the way you think about emotion is a bit... One-dimensional. Have you completed five volumes of the Book of Hunger and Hardship? I have. Okay then, Junior Agonizer. How about this? I'll tell you about a feeling I've had. Then, you tell me if it feeds your pain worm or not. Yes, very good. Okay, I'll tell you about... A memory from childhood. I love to dance. I took a ton of classes, begged my parents for each one. I was really good too. But somewhere before I was a teenager, I quit. I can't even remember why. I think of that kid sometimes, the path she was on. She wasn't afraid to be excited. I think of myself in those recitals, in my sparkly tutu, bouncing up and down. See? Makes me laugh. Makes me want to cry too. So? Can Metawopian eat that? If the primary component of an emotion is pain, which is to say... If you would prefer for it to stop... Then it would be... Aganon was visibly squirming. Hmm... We're making him reassess his religion a bit. The question would be, is it mainly painful? Or is the pain merely... I wanted to smile, but I bit my lip. I would have to consult the Book of Hunger and Hardship. Listen, Aganon, you feel good. Hmm... Plenty of other people feel bad enough right now. If I say this one, I think he won't like it. I don't think the pain worm is going to starve anytime soon. He was quiet for a moment. I appreciate your counsel. Maybe this is what I am intended to learn in Volume 6. <laughs> Maybe you just need a feel grid. Aganon looked out the window as we approached the dark building that looked like it had been a diner at some point. I didn't see too many signs of old L.O. between all the shiny new construction. This is the place. Perhaps I can use this building as a meeting space. It's big. Good, that's what I want. Is it? Yes, Lena. I am... proud of my work. Thank you. Perhaps I will see you again soon. He waved to someone and walked away. The air still had that stale french fry smell. It was kind of nice to see the past peeking out. Nice. And also a little sad. But I definitely felt full. Hmm. Interesting fella. This guy is a little bit different in that his story... 
doesn't quite relate to Cyberpunk directly. <laughs> Lena has potential as a junior agonizer. Thank you. People probably don't like how weird he is, and that's why he has a low rating in the system. But he's been very nice to me. Just goes to show that I was judging him, kinda. I'm yellow now. I can go help Sabi. <laughs> but how long can I put this off for? I'm kinda curious. Do I want to look at everything before we get out of here? Agonin is still here! Hmm. Well, you know what? Maybe what we'll do is... I am gonna go to... This charging station, because this one's expensive. And then maybe do you want to check out this lady first? Because we don't want to do three in a row, right? I want Carlos, but he's not coming back. I think this is all we've got for now. Hold on then. Let me charge up. Savy's like, oh my freaking god, my best friend. She has the passphrase, she has the data, she's not bringing it to me though. And I gotta stay in hiding this whole time. <laughs> Stella Buniel, this above all, to thine own self be true. She sounds kind of spiritual too. My nav led me into a desolate industrial area, the kind of place that reminds you it's nighttime. I pulled up to an old warehouse that had been turned into lofts. A band was loading up in front with stacks of amps and two long-legged blue whale puppets with amplifier eyes. Driver, how many passengers have had you had tonight? What do you ask? Were they coughing at all? Showing any signs of infection? It's okay. I'd rather just know so I can protect myself. No, they seem fine. Although you're sitting in the same seat as, you know, the junior agonizer. <laughs> who I just had five minutes ago. Is there something going around? Everything goes around constantly. That's the problem. Bird flu, swine flu, and people laugh, but Ebola is out there. By the time you show symptoms, you've already been contagious for 48 hours. Didn't they find a cure for Ebola, though? Spores from that rainforest beetle fungus? Ha, <laughs> good one. That's not a joke. It won the Nobel Prize. <sighs> Where are my manners? Nice to meet you, Lena. I'm Ned. I've been spending too much time around my grandson. Kids are like germ travel agents. Whoa, you don't look like a grandma. Touch a Lego brick and boom! A virus has a one-way ticket to your immune system. They're allowed to say Lego? <laughs> you got any kids? Uh... How old is your grandson? Gonna be four tomorrow. Yeah, she looks a little bit young, right? So like, how old is her daughter or son? <laughs> Got him one of those Pokemon what's-its. <laughs> uh, that doesn't make sense at all. Wait, if the grandson is four... No, it doesn't make sense, because she looks like she's 30 max. Oh my god. W was I hallucinating? I didn't answer her, though. She asked me a question. A low-flying drone buzzed me back to reality. Nope, this was happening. Say, you look like a gal I can trust. Got an honest face. Have you heard that before? <laughs> Actually, I hear that a lot. Just not the part about being a gal. Well, between you and me... I've noticed a few strange things happening around town these last few days. Have you seen anything suspicious? Uh, you mean besides whatever is going on right now? I see, I see. Now, I know we like our fair share of drama in our little hamlet. But I saw something today that cheerleader gal turned up dead behind the video store. Sophie? And well, 
A man can't be having scares like that at my age. Y your man? Oh, yeah, you know, I, I I thought about it earlier too, but her name is... His name is Ned? Oh, oh, uh... Okay. I'm not judging you, I'm just confused. So, how old are you, Ned? Oh, God! Break! I know you see me like me, in my actual body. But normally, I'd appear to you as a middle-aged man named Ned. Normally? Some cyberpunk shenanigans going on. Oh, I wish you had a headset. It's way harder to practice like this. So, like, did you believe the character? Did you feel a mix of... what was it? Homespun charm and creeping murder mystery suspense? Uh, Ned, I need a little help understanding this. It's for an immersion. I'm actually a real actor, but the legit gigs never pay, you know? It's through Ojo's Abiertos. Have you done one of their stories? Uh, not yet? Is that like a role-playing game? We're like any other immersion troupe out there. We bounce around the theater space, improv characters that we get like the day before. So the customer in the headset can save the girl or slay the dragon or both, whatever plot pack they bought. Like a VR? Tonight's menu features a gritty historical mystery set at the turn of the century, why to kill? Featuring Ned, a schlub with a sordid tie to Newberry High's beloved murder prom queen, blah blah. Wait, so Ned's the killer? I wish. Strictly supporting cast. A gloom settled over her. Savi tried to drag me to this haunted house immersion last Halloween. Oh, so she was just practicing on me. No body swapping or time travel shenanigans. One of my exes and one of her exes both ended up working there, and she said it would be like therapy to go axe murder them as evil zombies or whatever. I should have done it. <laughs> uh, it's a show. They're actors, and then people come to do things to them. They participate in a role play. Is that what's going on? So, are people ever mean to you in these shows? Most people are cool, unless they're drunk. Sound familiar? Hmm. <laughs> Once I had some tourists who were convinced I was a super realistic AI. Uh huh. She stared at her hands, and the gloom settled back over her. <sighs> Sorry, they just dropped a bunch of new plots on us last night. Can I run another character by you? Okay, I play along. Anything to keep me from obsessing over Savy. Sure. Lifesaver. So on tonight's menu, I have two more characters. Fruel, the dark, extraxis spiderling who guards the mirror of many faces. Or Thora, a bad girl witch who pulls you into hijinks at Cauldron Academy. Uh, let's go with Fruel. Okay, so imagine I'm 10 feet tall, and I have 8 legs, countless glimmering eyes. And smoke billows out of my gaping maw, cool? <laughs> Can you maybe not be a spider? Can you... Silence, manfolk! She stomped her foot so hard, it shook the front seat. What be the meaning of such disturbance to the most precious slumber of the Extraxis? Entraxis. Sorry, just looking for a mirror. So manfolk came to play with Fruel. Think she's so clever, but she be a fool. <laughs> I don't know about rhyming Fruel with Fool. Maybe I can do something for you, Fruel? Manfolk can leave! Unless Daughter of Man believes she is worthy of Fruel's treasure? 
Yes, beast, so hand it over. Not so simple, not so simple. Price of treasure is great indeed. Answer Fruel's riddle, and manfolk will get what manfolk seek. Though the mirror of many faces may not be what manfolk think. Riddle me, Fruel. This is exhausting. We're basically practicing a script with her, but we don't have one. Listen carefully. How many manfolk work for Neocab? <laughs> uh, well, off the top of my head... How many manfolk... Uh, people work for Neocab? Did I even know that? We don't exactly have conferences. 300? Wrong! Wrong! Manfolk be wrong! What's the answer then? The answer is none. Enough of your tricks, beast! Yes, many manfolk say they work for Neocab, but actually, we were slaves or something, right? But none of them actually do any work! What about me? No, no, I will not be defeated. Manfolk lose. Now, manfolk must die. And break. Whew. Guess I got fooled. Sorry, he got angry faster than I expected. Should I tone him down? I guess it depends on what the treasure is? Oh, I can't remember. I think it turns out that you were the treasure. Or actually, I think Fruel is a treasure? Sometimes we give away pens, so... Hey, that was really helpful! Thanks for playing along. I think Fruel might have some legs. When we got close to the theater, the sky lit up with roaming spotlights and holograms teasing the plot packs. A blocky computer flashed fatal error inside a passing cloud. A sexy witch winked at me, then zoomed away on her broom. <sighs> Look at that, it's showtime. Hmm. You're really good, you know? I mean, I don't really have a measure for how good you are, but you were interesting enough. Thanks! The truth is, the headsetters don't really care what we say. As long as they get the ending they ordered. Hopefully, I won't be doing this much longer anyway. Oh yeah, because it sounded like she didn't like it. Take care. Her shoulders were slumped as she slipped past the lines at the doors. No one recognized her as the person they were paying to see perform, but of course they wouldn't. Right now, she was in character, only as herself, and that didn't seem like a role she wanted much at all. Well, that was kind of a new one. A cyberpunk futuristic actor. In the future, with VR headsets, immersion is much more easily achieved and you gotta do all these crazy things to keep the customers happy. Thanks for being a good sport, treasure hunter. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Well, I think we should probably go to Savi soon, but I am curious about Agonin if we can finish that one up because he keeps appearing on the map. Klaus and Azul I'm not too keen about because I've seen them so many times. <laughs> but you, your rating is okay. Agonin looked strange, not just sad, but anxious. You okay, my buddy? I was hoping you would be my driver again. Have you ever watched someone die? <laughs> Straight into the heavy stuff, huh? Sorry. How are you doing? Hmm. Oh, terrible. Glad to hear it. <laughs> Have you, though? What? Watch someone die? No. Never. You see... There is this acolyte named Miranda. 
She came to her first meeting several months ago. As soon as she spoke, I knew she belonged with us. I don't think we should make fun of him. <laughs> I'll bet you say that about everyone. Not at all. Most people who come aren't ready for the pain worm. What if I showed up? Hmm, it's difficult to say. Miranda was drawn to Metawopian because, for years now, she has suffered from horrible pain, chronic. Yet, through it all, she demonstrates such mirth. She has a well-developed sense of the absurd. Does the pain worm appreciate the absurd? Oh, definitely. It's in Volume 3 of the Book of the Hunger and Hardship. Absurd laughter is one of the two sounds that echo forever in the void. <laughs> What's the other sound? It's the resonant vibration of a complicated metaphor introduced in Volume 2. Oh, of course. What did you think it was? Screaming? Yeah, or like, eternal sobbing? <laughs> no, eternal sobbing is entirely soundless. How else would... I digress. So, Miranda is... Yes, Miranda is dying. Oh no. I believe the cult of the pain worm has been a great comfort to her. Lena. Do you know what acolytes like best about our group? I couldn't say. What is it? I'll explain it this way. Mirana is always in pain. Very often, the people around her squirm in discomfort. At her discomfort. They would prefer she wasn't in pain, of course. But absent relief, they wonder if she might not show it so much. Oh... Yeah... That's very human. When we comfort somebody because they're sad... How much of it is because we don't want them to show sadness versus we actually don't want them to be sad? Or do we even care? That's very human. Perhaps humans need to hold themselves to a higher standard. The Book of Hunger and Hardship is very clear on this point. When we meet, we accept each other's suffering plainly, without pity or condescension. And we never, ever say, I hope you feel better. That's, I don't know, a lot. It is an advanced teaching, and you're not even at level 3 yet. <laughs> Have I been recruited? Never without your consent. But if you did join our meetings, the local junior agonizer would probably allow you to skip a few levels. Oh, thank you. And that's you, right? At any rate, Miranda is special. She has shown me what Metawopian offers more clearly than any of the senior agonizers. And now... Aganin trailed off. Now... what? Her pain has gotten worse. And is only going to get worse. It's become... There is a nurse at her apartment now. Hmm... Miranda has chosen to die tonight. Are you going to her right now? Do you think that's the right choice? It doesn't matter what I think. The choice is made. My role is clear. The truth is, I am afraid. That is extremely understandable. 
Is it? Sitting with acolytes at their death is perhaps my most important role. But I do not want it. You don't want the suffering. After death, there is no pain. There's... nothing. Lena, I have studied all kinds of pain, as well as fear and loneliness. But how does a person face... nothing? That's a very philosophical question, and I'm not sure if I have any answers for you. If you face nothing, then theoretically you should feel nothing. So it's not like a source of distress, I would assume. Are we talking about Miranda facing death? Or you? I wish I could only think of my acolyte. But yes, I am thinking of myself too. I cannot face nothing. Not yet. Maybe not ever. Everyone worries about that. I know that. And yet... Agonen, you already got through the hard part. You got into my car tonight to go see her through this. That's brave. And it's all she really needs. What if I... Opened the door and rolled out of the car. I would stop. Pick you up off the pavement. Stuff you back inside. And keep driving. Are you serious? Very. This is a one-way express to Miranda's side. I'm not going to let you do something that will only cause you pain. This guy seeks pain, but now that he's actually facing something very painful, he's scared of it. The kind of pain that eats you. And doesn't feed anything, trust me. But pain is... I get that you want pain, but here's the thing about that. Anyone can just go around purposely causing pain for everybody. That just sounds like cheating to me. He didn't say anything after that. I drove faster. All I could think about was a woman lying in her bed, waiting to die. Hmm. And about nothingness. It's just up here. Already? I feel like I could have been driving for three hours. And you still would have said that. He's really nervous. He stared at the building that held his dying friend inside. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I mean this in a nice way, but... It's the hardest thing Miranda has ever had to do. You're just there to be there. For her, you know? I got the sudden feeling he was going to hug me, but he stopped. How do you know all these things, Lena? I drive people around in the middle of the night. Kinda teaches you about human frailty. Well... Thank you. I am still... Deeply uncomfortable. But you're right. That does not matter. I am here. Thank you for bringing me. Hmm. The ride's on me. I don't think we need the money anymore. I'd lose the coin, but I felt like I had to do something. That's very kind of you. Even if it is a blatant attempt to mitigate our mutual discomfort. <laughs> You're very welcome. He climbed out 
and cross the sidewalk with small steps. I wondered what it would be like in there. To see your friend just... go away. I thought about Savy. I watched him push through the building's front door to face the unknown. The big unknown. But what else could he do? Hmm, this, uh, Aganon's stories are a bit different from everyone else's, I feel like, definitely. This driver does very important work, and I value her as a friend and teacher. We started out learning about Aganon, and he's somebody who seeks pain. Oh, I got money anyway. But, uh, I think he's learning that just seeking out pain itself is not really that meaningful. And he's trying to figure out how it is and what it is to live. Weird, weird. Very, very non-mainstream kind of story. We never ever say, I hope you feel better. Bon voyage, Miranda. There's all kinds of things in Los Ojos. What can I say?